Almighty, gracious God, behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men, to suffer death upon the cross through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and have delivered you up for your Redeemer to be scourged. For I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross. O my people, holy Lord God, holy and almighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, leave us not to bitter death. O Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people? Wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar drink, O my people. Holy Lord, holy and almighty God, Holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people? Wherein have I offended you? Answer me. What more could have been done for my vineyard that I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why didn't yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God? O oh, my people, holy Lord, God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith. O Lord, have mercy.
a moment of silence. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated for offering. passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, and tonight we are going to follow in his footsteps everywhere he went.
from one place to the next to the next, all the way to the cross, from the upper room to the Garden of Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, Jesus began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell down on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, as I, not as I will, but as you will. From the Garden of Gethsemane to Caiaphas. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders had gathered. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death. But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and the coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? And they answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you?
from Caius to Pontius Pilate. They led Jesus from the house of Caius to the governor's headquarters, and it was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters, so they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went inside, outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This is to fill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, Sir, do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priest have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born. For this purpose I have come into the world. To bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. Jesus is now marched off to be before Herod. 
When Pilate heard this, he asked where the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him because he had heard about him and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So Herod questioned Jesus at some length, but Jesus made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked Jesus. Then arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. Jesus back before Pilate one more time. Pilate then called the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and he said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him, I will therefore punish him and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man and release to us Barabbas. A man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving of death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. 
He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they had asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. is taken from Pilate to the governor's palace. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him, and they put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, they took the reed and struck him on the head. When they had, had mocked him, they stripped him of his robe, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. As they went out, they found a man, Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots.
our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. They sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two robbers who were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided Jesus, wagging their heads and saying, You would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked Jesus, saying, He saved others, but he cannot even save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with Jesus also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sakabathini, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge filled with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. On this Good Friday evening, grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Christian friends, how many times have you heard one or more of these phrases? Are you finished yet? I just finished a little while ago. Oh good, I'm finally finished. How about I'll finish it tomorrow. Or I finish just in time. Any of these sound familiar to you? Many of us have started and consequently finished projects over the years, of course. At work, we may have been given an assignment to complete. But it's taken a while to finish. And maybe it goes back to school days. Our homework. Put off until the last minute, or maybe not finished at all. Most of us were taught, however, to always finish what we start. And of course, finishing an assignment or project, no matter how difficult, it does give us a good feeling. 
a feeling of accomplishment, and a feeling of fulfillment. Now, along the way, the project may be tough. It may have its ups and downs. It might cause us frustration or even some pain and suffering. No matter, let's pause on this Good Friday evening and think about how tough that particular project really was. How much trouble was it really to finish a particular project or assignment that we took on? Any project or assignment we had to finish pales in comparison to what we meditate on tonight. The words from Scripture, the words of Jesus from the cross, it is finished. Three simple words, but not simple in meaning. In the Greek, Jesus said on the cross, Tetelestai. He finished in the past the prophetic words we heard from the Old Testament. It is still finished in the present. It will remain finished in the future. What is finished? As we hear these words from our Savior, do we think He is giving up? Are these words words of defeat? Of course not. He is proclaiming a victory. With His final breath, our Lord and Savior announces to us the victory He won for us on the cross, the victory we have in and through Him. It is finished, paid in full. These are the words of comfort from a very uncomfortable setting that we know about. The grim and gruesome Roman-style execution on the cross that started in the garden, went to Caiaphas, to Pilate, to Herod, back to Pilate, the courtyard, the road to Golgotha, and then, on Good Friday, the cross. Through this horrific type of death carried out on Mount Calvary by the Romans, Jesus paid our debt as mortal sinners with his perfect, sinless life, with his innocence. Martin Luther, in the small catechism, of course, explains to us in the second article of the Apostles' Creed. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. When a monthly credit card bill comes in the mail, it may make one nervous. One wonders, I wonder what debt I owe. And then one needs to carefully peruse the bill when they open it up. And this is the same in our lives as well. Continually, we need to check to see how we have accumulated a bill that Jesus paid for us. And he still needs to pay for us each and every day. But first of all, we inherited our debt through original sin. Then we add to it by our sins of thought, word, and deed. Yes, through our lies, our dishonesty, our laziness, uh, unkindness, gossiping, having sinful thoughts of any kind and so on. I think we get the point. And we must look at Jesus' perfect life. He was loving, caring, kind, and gentle. He ministered to all. And of course, he was forgiving and is forgiving. 
Now, we cannot be perfect like Jesus was. We know that. But we can be sanctified through the work of the Holy Spirit, and we can grow in our faith in our Lord Jesus as a loving and forgiving Redeemer. And when we as sinners fall short, we can ask Him for forgiveness and pray with confidence because He has paid our debt through His suffering and death on the cross. Yes, suffering and death. He did not have to do it for us, but He took our place. Through the grace of God the Father, He sacrificed His only begotten Son. He didn't have to do it, but out of love, God provided a plan of salvation for His people. Again, through the suffering and death of His only Son. Yes, Jesus, suffering. Pause and reflect on this suffering. On this Good Friday, we should think about it always. On that Good Friday of what we call Holy Week, Jesus hadn't slept for 36 hours. They pressed a crown of thorns into his head. He suffered numerous whippings and beatings and mockery. They sent him out on the road to Mount Calvary carrying his own cross. When he got there, they nailed his hands and feet to that wooden cross. But the worst was yet to come. On Calvary, the slow, degrading, agonizing, suffering, extreme suffering on a cruel punishment, cruelest of all kind, on the cross. He did this for us, for you, for me. It's sacrificial love. Sacrificial love. And near the end of his suffering, Jesus cried out, It is finished! He cried out in victory, so the debt was paid. You see, Good Friday is a day of sadness, but also of joy. When we focus on the cross and what happened there nearly 2,000 years ago, we see the cost of our sinfulness. We also see the amazing grace of a loving triune God, whom we need to give thanks to, praise, and glorify in our daily walk with Him in our worship life. Because, yes, it is finished. But it's paid in full. As believers, we are saved. We'll join him someday in our heavenly home. So tonight and always we say thank you, Lord. From the hymn, Christ, the life of all the living. Then for all that wrought my pardon, for thy sorrows deep and sore, for thine anguish in the garden, I will thank thee evermore. Thank thee for thy groaning, sighing, for thy bleeding and thy dying. Thousand, thousand, thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, unto thee. In our Savior's precious name, amen. Now the peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. O come, let us worship him. And we pray. We implore you, O Lord that your abundant blessing may be upon your people who have held the passion and death of your Son in devout remembrance, that we may receive your pardon and the gift of your comfort and may increase in faith and take hold of eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.